ChatGPT launched an absolutely terrible resource for prompting, and I think it deserves more attention because we need to talk about how bad AI education is today and how much is dependent on getting it right. And ChatGPT is a leader in the space. They're seen as an influencer, as the first mover. People will look to things like the ChatGPT prompt pack that just got released and say, this is something we need to give to all of our teams. They're terrible prompts, guys. They're like one or two line prompts that are extremely generic. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and read you one for their most technical team, engineers. Let's say your engineers are asked to come up with GDPR compliance uh, responses from a technical perspective. How should we advance GDPR compliance? You might think that you need a fairly complex prompt for that. It should take account of your data schema. It should look at the countries that you have a footprint in. It should look at data processing, also where data is stored, what your existing stack looks like. None of that, none of that comes out in this prompt. Research best practices for GDPR CCPA compliance, not even one. It mashes them together so we can help kick off our discussions with our legal team. When has engineering kicked off discussions with legal ever? Context, our app stores sensitive user data in the EU and US. Output, a compliance checklist with citations sorted by regulation. Include links to documentation and regulations. No, that's what Google is for. That is not what intelligence is for. If you're building intelligence that's too cheap to meter, teach us how to use it. Be useful with it. And this worries me because one of the looming fears I have for 2026 is that we are going to get a generation of builders, of workers, of knowledge workers trapped in the messy middle of AI adoption. And resources like this encourage that kind of behavior. They encourage the assumption that we only need to pretend that this is regular software we have to adopt. I can go get the prompt pack from OpenAI. I can roll it out as a manager to my sales team or my engineering team or my product team, and I'm done. And we can move on. And it's just, it's a one and done thing. AI is on an exponential curve. This is a case of getting onto a moving train. You are either going to lean all the way in and you are going to learn fast and you are going to scale up quickly in your skills and keep leaning in, or you're going to get left behind. And if you learn two or three lines in a prompt and you think you've got it, you're in the left behind contingent. You're going to be surprised when people come along and say, I one shotted an entire financial analysis off a screenshot. And here it is in Excel, which by the way, real example, I did that with Sonnet 4.5 last night. Very helpful. I actually tried it with ChatGPT5 as well. ChatGPT5 did not do as good a job, which I thought was really interesting because it's usually very good at image analysis. But that being said, that's an example of the kind of thing that I tried. I learned something new about image capabilities that wasn't really published very well from Claude. And now I know more. And now I'm sharing it. There are hundreds of those examples. Part of why I make this channel is so that it is easier to keep up. It is easier to understand. Part of why I write the posts I do on Substack is so it's easier to find. My response, by the way, to the open AI choice to release effectively a gigantic packet of lousy prompts, by the way, not just me saying that, Reddit also has been ripping it apart. And I know we don't always like Reddit, but they have rightly been ripping this prompt pack apart as completely useful for people who are serious about AI. I am making a prompt pack in response that is actually useful. I'm going to put on Substack. And so if you want something by job family, I'm putting it together. I just, this is, it's really bad. You can't assume that all you need is basic ability to ask questions of AI. If that were true, one, chat GPT-5 would be easier to prompt, which it is not. And two, you would assume that people would be able to transfer their existing Google skills to AI seamlessly, which it's actually a very different skill set. Because people have been asking questions of Google for a very long time. That's not really a new thing. I'm concerned. I'm concerned that our assumptions about what is needed for AI education do not match the pace of development. If I were designing a curriculum for teams, and I get asked this, so I'm going to share right here with you what I would say. If I were asked to design an upskilling curriculum for teams, I would start by working through use cases with them. Where are the pain points in the team's existing workflow? Engineers, product managers, sales, whatever it is, where are the pain points where we see lots and lots of manual cycles and not a lot of results? Like you just grind on it. Great, thank you. That is a candidate for talking about AI. And then we start to ground the whole day, the whole time we have together in actually talking through how AI can unlock that for you. 
And that makes it tangible. It immediately goes from the silly two or three line prompts like I've been tearing apart here into something that is useful for your use case. Maybe your use case is that your team struggles to get classic, strong, bulleted technical requirements out of the documents product gives you. Great. That's one we could work on with AI. Maybe your team struggles with getting accurate sales pipeline predictions. Well, thanks to tool use with LLMs, you can start to get that too. Maybe you're struggling with the just the pace of the interview pipeline as you try to bring people on board. You can get note taking. You can get some standardized forms to review. You can get standardized question sets. There's a lot you can do with AI to lift that burden and still put the human at the center of the interview process so you can focus on assessing candidates. Those are just off the top of my head. Every single department is full of those kinds of opportunities. And the gap is our ability to understand how quickly AI is scaling and how much capability we have on the table. There is meat on the bone here that we are not touching. Most managers have no idea how much AI opportunity there is in their space. Like I look at it when I come in and I'm like, 80 or 90% of the AI opportunity is untouched. You guys are sitting here talking about, you know, how Copilot can do this and that or how ChatGPT can do this and that. Great. I'm glad you're chatting with ChatGPT. I'm glad you're using Copilot for your emails. Have you thought in workflows? Have you thought about the impact your team is delivering and worked back from that into your pain points? No? Well, maybe we should start with that and then get into training. And so, yes, when I build prompts, when I think about what teams need, I think about how to build prompts that are going to be supportive of workflows. So of course they are longer and they can be longer because AI can do more. And by the way, if you're listening to this and you're like, my org uses Copilot, Nate, like ChatGPT, what? Claude, what? Well, one, I have news for you. Claude is now in the Office family for Microsoft. It's, it's blessed. That is why Satya Nadella was bragging about having the best Excel model. He just put Claude in a wrapper, right? Like he doesn't have a magical best Excel model that he's been hiding. He put Claude in a wrapper. So Claude's gonna be there. But two, it is not the AI model that matters. It is the way you use it, which is a very sort of Zen thing to say. But it's true. If you have a good idea of what you wanna get done with workflows, you can do a ton with Copilot. I wrote a whole guide for that. You can do a ton with Copilot to enable your business to actually use AI. It is not just for email. It is a model you can actually employ. Like to sidetrack conversations around my model's terrible or my model isn't as good as like the best thinking models out there. You can still do a lot with it. We would still be impressed if it was 2022 and that model launched. If Copilot came out in 2022, everyone would be over the moon. There's a ton you can do with it. The gap is people. The gap is people, one, not being willing to train, and that's part of why Accenture fired 11,000 people is the, the strong implication was they were not willing to be trained on AI. I don't know if that's true. It's Accenture's side of the story, but that's what they said. Um, and then two, the gap is people thinking a little bit of training is enough. And that is why I am concerned about what ChatGPT did, because they basically said, do you want to get started? A little bit is enough. You can just get started. Put these two sentences in on GDPR, CCPA, and you'll be done. You'll be good. And then they did that 200 times. People on Reddit were saying the intern wrote the prompts uh, with ChatGPT. And I'm like, no, I think the intern just wrote it by themselves because ChatGPT would write a better prompt. We owe it to ourselves and people farther in AI, people at model makers, owe it to the community to produce better resources. And I know that we have a gradation of talent and we need on-ramps for everybody to get into AI. Not everybody's gonna sit there and listen to Andre Carpathy talk about LLMs and just go, wow, this is amazing. Yes, they're stochastic people spirits. It's an allusion to the YC 2025 presentation that he made. No, like they're not all gonna do it. And so everybody needs to get on at their own pace, but we need to have really clear progression and we need to help people to understand principles that can scale. And so if you're going to give people simple prompts, maybe that's all right. As long as they understand, one, this is just the start and you need to do better. And two, this is how it ties to your workflow and moves things forward. And three, these are the principles that scale with it. Like if they had taken the time to say from their own best practices, if OpenAI had taken the time to say it's really important to establish context for the prompt, having a goal for the prompt is important. Look how we're doing that even in a simple prompt. Right, like that's helpful. That helps you to internalize these principles. If you don't do that, you're gonna be stuck thinking that you understand prompting an AI and you're gonna get left behind in 2026. I don't want that. We need better prompt 
education. We need better AI education. We need better understanding of where AI opportunities lie in our fields of work so that we retain our curiosity and we learn with AI. And we're just not getting that when we get resources like this. And so I call them like I see them, right? Like every model maker has spots they do well on and spots they don't. In this case, I don't think the new chat GPT prompt pack is moving the ball forward at all. It reads very much like a defensive gesture where they needed people buying chat GPT for enterprise to have a link they could point to, to say, oh, they offer prompt pack education. And then like somebody ticks the box in IT and they get the sale. They don't. That is not what that is. So I build some prompts, but mostly make sure you understand why you are learning the AI you're learning. Make sure you understand your use cases and make sure you lean in on growing your AI knowledge over time. This is not a typical software adoption story. This is a new general purpose technology and we need to treat it like that if we are going to successfully hang on to the train while it is scaling exponentially. On at 4.5 did 30 hours of continuous work and rebuilt Slack. They built their own version of Slack and Sonnet just went and did it and wrote 11,000 lines of code and it worked. That is what the bar is becoming. I'm not saying any of the dramatic things about that replaces engineers or this and that, because if you work in software engineering, like you will see the weak spots of AI all over the place, but it's a big, big deal. It is going to change how engineers work. It's going to change how PMs work. It's going to change how product gets built. It's going to change our velocity expectations. And we need to have AI education that keeps that in mind. When we talk about prompting, we need to prompt with that world in mind. And that's why I care so much about this, because we deserve better. So this is my plea. If you were a model maker, please invest in, yes, AI education for beginners, but really clear on-ramps, really clear, clear scale-ups. Help us to be able to teach this well. And in the meantime, I'm doing my best to put content out there everywhere I can think of that is going to be more useful, that is going to be more aligned to where AI is going. So if you want the prompts, you know where to get them. In the meantime, have fun, enjoy AI, pick a problem space you care about, and uh, yeah, get passionate about it because I don't think we're gonna survive if we're not passionate about it.